Okay, so yesterday you got an introduction to um, kind of the basics, the basic concepts of uh, differential equations. Um, so today we'll talk about kind of a special and, and common kind of differential equation called the first order linear differential equation. So let's take a look at what that is. And I'll remember to go to full screen this time. Um, so we're going to look at uh, uh, first order linear diffie q's. Okay. Uh, now it turns out one of the homework problems from yesterday, um, number 11 I believe it is, uh, looks like this. It said dy dx equals 1 minus y over x. And you're supposed to come up with a solution for this. Um, now you could rearrange this and look at more like um, you know a, a typical differential equation say dy dx I'm going to add this to both sides um, y over x equals 1 now why do I do that because I get all my y's on one side and we kind of talked about that um, but I'm going to take this a step further and I'm going to say that dy dx plus 1 over x times y equals 1. Now, why would I do this? Because this makes it look like a first order uh, equation. Uh, but what is a first order equation? Well, I've got a second or a first derivative here, and the highest derivative I have is the first derivative. And then I've got um, the second term here, which is just you know the zeroth order derivative or, or the original function itself. And it's only multiplied by a function of x. There's no y times a y derivative, or y times a y derivative, or y squared times a y second derivative, or anything like that. Um, the, the y functions and the derivatives of the y functions are only multiplied by functions of x. And so you may look at this, and you may screw around with this for a long time, and, and find that it's really, uh, really pretty tricky to solve, unless you're very clever. And by really clever, I mean I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x. So I've got x times dy dx plus 1 over x times, uh, oops, times y in there equals x. So why would I do that? Because when I distribute this, I've got um, x times dy dx plus 1, right, because x times 1 over x is 1 times y equals x. Well, so what? Well, if you're really observant, this looks like, this thing here is x times the derivative of y plus 1 times the original function y. That looks a little bit like the product rule. The first times the derivative of the second. d times d dx of xy equals x, right? Because this is really where did this come from? This may have come from the product of x and y, right? The first is x times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx, plus the derivative of the first, derivative of x is 1, times the original first function, y. Now, with this, we can integrate both sides. And I'll do that like this. Integrate this guy here, um, and then integrate this guy here. Uh, this dx, of course, has to come over to here. Well, the integral of the derivative, right, really is just the um, uh, original function itself. So I've got xy equals x squared over 2 plus c. And again, I only add... Um, uh, the c to one side because I, I kind of combined both constants of integration. Um, now I'm getting pretty close here. I can uh, I want to solve for some function of y. Um, so I'm going to say y equals I'll divide this x over here so that becomes just x over 2x. Uh, nope, x over 2. And this becomes plus c over x. And look at how important it is to add that constant of integration because it, now that became really part of the original function. So I've got, I started with the differential equation, 
I applied this very clever little multiplication here and then I uh, integrated both sides and uh, came up with a nice function in, of y, an explicit function for y equals some function of x. The problem is we don't know exactly what this function is because we have this uh, constant of integration c. So here's where we apply our initial condition. Right, which was um, this, we're forcing this to go through the point to 1. And uh, so this happens up here. If I use this initial condition uh, and I plug those in there, then I get, um, is it 2, 1 or 2, negative 1? It actually is. 2, negative 1. So then I'll plug in uh, negative 1 equals 2 over 2 plus c over 2 and that gives me negative uh, move that over there so negative 2 equals c over 2 which means that c equals negative 4 so then I can say that y equals x over 2 minus 4 over x and so that's my final answer for this particular differential equation. All right. But if some of you are moaning right now saying, oh, come on, um, I don't blame you because it, that, that was a pretty clever insight. So I'm going to do another example here and see if we can uh, kind of hammer out some, you know, take the magic away and, and, and do this more consistently. Uh, my next differential equation I'm going to solve is dy dx. Uh, equals um, 3 times y plus x e to the 3x. Now, this doesn't really look like, you know, I want to get all my y's to one side, so it looks more like this first order linear differential equation. So I'm just going to rearrange this dy dx, get this y over here, minus 3y uh, equals x e to the 3x. Okay, so I've got the first derivative, the zeroth derivative, um, the, this, the linear term here is just multiplied by uh, some constant, so this looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to write this as, I'm going to say this kind of is the form of, I'm going to do it green because green is for forms that we like. This looks like um, dy dx plus some function p of x times y equals q of x. So that's the form I generally want to get these in. Um, and uh, so in this case, p of x is negative 3, q of x is x e to the 3x, like that. Now, I'm going to multiply this by something on both sides. But here I'm going to pull a little trick. And the trick I'm going to pull is, um, get back to the black pen, um, I'm going to use a multiplier. And that multiplier is going to be v of x, which I'm going to pick to be e to the integral of negative 3 dx. So what is this thing? V of x, this is going to equal, the integral of negative 3 is uh, negative 3x, so that's going to be, um, let's see, e to the negative 3x. Right, so that becomes my integral, my multiplier. So I'm going to multiply both sides by this thing. So I'm going to multiply um, e to the negative 3x over here, times this whole thing, and then x e to the 3x e to the negative 3x over here. Um, now, you may be wondering, why did you ever use that? All right, let's, let's continue the journey here. Um, so we have e to the negative 3x times dy dx. Uh, and then this becomes 
y, let's see, it's a plus now. I'm going to write it just so it looks more like this form. Um, y, ah, I'm not going to have room there. Let me move this down. This is taking up too much space, uh, but we'll be all right. So um, it's going to be e to the negative 3x. Uh, it's a 3 times dy dx. I'm going to say plus um, y times times negative 3 times e to the negative 3x, because I have to distribute this thing. And that's going to equal to x, well, e to the 3x, e to the negative 3x, those cancel out. So it's just going to be an x over there, right? Um, now let's take a look at this thing. e to the 3x dy dx plus y times negative 3 times e to the negative 3x. Well, this looks like the derivative d dx of first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. And sure enough, negative 3 times e to the negative 3x is the derivative of e to the 3x. So holy cow, is that a cool trick? e to the 3x times uh, y would equal x. So if I integrate both sides, the integral of the original just becomes this. So that just becomes, oh, this is supposed to be negative 3x here. And that's supposed to be a negative 3 up there. Um, e to the negative 3x. So the, the integral of the derivative is just e to the negative 3x um, times y equals the integral of this is just x squared over 2. Right? Plus c. Got to have that plus c. And now I'm going to, uh, if I want to get a, just a nice clean function uh, for y, uh, I've got to divide this. So I get y equals x squared over 2e to the negative 3x plus c over e to the negative 3x. All right. Now, since these are negative, uh, I could, you know, move those to the top and then rewrite this as, um, let's see, y equals uh, x squared over 2. Um, well, I could factor that out, actually, put them on top and factor them out, plus c times e to the positive 3x. All right, so there is my um, solution to this particular differential equation. Quite a trick, huh? Now, how does that work out every time? Let's do one more just to kind of put it into practice. Uh, I'll put a box around this as my final answer. All right, one more, and then we'll kind of pull the curtains back. Um, let's say uh, I've got another one that goes like... Uh, this is similar, but uh, just different enough. For some reason, I used a bunch of threes again. I don't know why. Um, dy dx plus, uh, I'm going to write this as negative 3 over x times y uh, equals x. So this is already in the form that I wanted it. Um, where my p is negative 3 over x and my q is just an x. Uh, and remember, I found this multiplier, so I'm going to find the multiplier. Uh, and that's going to be v of x equals e to the integral of p of x, so it's negative 3 over x dx, like that. Um, and so I'm going to do this in my kind of talk it through in my head quickly, uh, and I suggest you guys maybe can do this on the side, because I don't have room. Um, the integral of negative 3 to the x will really be natural log, negative 3 times the natural log of x, um, and then if I could put the negative 3 uh, above the natural log, it'll become uh, the natural log of 1 over x cubed. Um, so it's e to the natural log of 1 over x cubed 
Well, e and the natural log cancel each other out, so this just becomes 1 over x cubed. Okay, so you should practice this. Do this on your own. Um, but, you know, maybe even pause right now and, and do it. But, uh, long story short, I'm going to take this multiplier and multiply it through here. So I'm going to say uh, 1 over x cubed times uh, dy dx plus, uh, now 1 over x cubed here, when I multiply that through, that's going to be uh, negative 3 over x to the fourth uh, times y equals, uh, that'll be 1 over x cubed times x is 1 over x squared. Okay, well how did this work out for us? First times the derivative of the second, we're hoping that this thing looks like the product rule. So does it? What's the derivative of 1 over x cubed? Well, it's really x to the negative 3. Oh, negative 3, reduce the power by 1, negative 4, sure it is. So this thing really turns out to be d by dx of 1 over x cubed times y equals 1 over x squared. Really, really slick. In my notes, I did this in about four steps. Um, so if this isn't crystal clear to you, make sure that you agree that this thing is a product rule expansion of this derivative. Um, so now when we integrate this thing, uh, let's integrate both sides. Um, so we need to put uh, integral dx and then integral dx. And what do we get here? Um, this just becomes 1 over x cubed times y, right? The integral of the derivative is, remains the same. And the integral of 1 over x squared, well, that's really um, x to the negative 2. So you increase the power by 1, that becomes x to the negative 1, and then negative. So that equals negative 1 over x. <coughs> now this one becomes pretty... Uh, easy to rearrange. We're going to multiply the x cubed by both sides here. Oh, got a plus c here. Multiply both sides by x cubed, and so that will give us y equals negative x squared there, uh, plus cx cubed. All right, and that is our final answer. Of course, if we had an initial condition that we were constrained to, then we could uh, you know, plug that in here and figure out what C is. Okay, so hopefully by now you are convinced that this works. Okay, but why? I, I hope you're wondering, well, how does that work? That is so clever. I never could have come up with that on my own, but someone much smarter than us uh, did. So um, how does this work? I'll even put a couple exclamation points in here. I mean, this is, just seems crazy. All right, well, so we're, let's write this out as kind of a um, generic form. We know we're starting with um, this uh, dy dx plus some p, some function p, times y, right? But we want that to look like we want it to look like a product rule, right? So we're going to multiply this by v. So then we're going to have, because we know we're going to use this multiplier, we're going to say that v times dy dx plus p times v times y. Now that has to look like, this is, the equal sign is a little confusing here. So this is, I'm going to do that in blue. Um, needs to look like, um, we want it to look like the derivative, d by dx, of some um, y times v. Okay. So we want v dy dx plus p times v times y to look like y times dv dx plus v times 
dy dx. All right. So we want this thing, the left side of our differential equation, to look like this you know, product rule differentiation. Well, we've got v dy dx, v dy dx on both sides, so that's nice. We can bring out the red pen. Those cancel out. So now we've got um, pvy has to look like y dv dx. Well, now we've only got one term on both sides. They each contain a y, so that's nice. We can get rid of those y's. And then we can go back to this and say that dv dx equals pv. Well, here we can just, we know p is a function of x, right? We know v and dv over here, so we can rearrange this to make it look like a differential equation. So we'll rearrange. Um, and we'll say that get all the v's over here, so this becomes 1 over v dv equals p dx, right? Well, let's integrate this. We'll integrate both sides. So the integral of 1 over v dv equals the integral of p dx. So that means that the natural log of v equals the integral of p dx. But I don't want the natural log of v, I just want to get v. So how do I do that? I you know, raise it to the e power. So v equals e to the integral p dx. Okay, so let's, let's review this again, because I know this is a little, the way I've written it out is a little confusing, but for the life of me, I can't find, come up with a better way to do it. I'm going to multiply, I'm just, let's just assume that we're going to multiply through by this thing, right? So this is our, um, this blue thing over here is the left-hand side. So this is the left-hand side. But I want my, when I multiply through by this multiplier, I want it to look like a product rule. I want it to be the, res the left-hand side to be the result of this really convenient product rule. So I know the left-hand side looks like v dy dx plus pv times y. But it, that's going to look like this product rule is first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. I want these to be the same. I'm going to force them to be the same. I can eliminate the v dy dx term, then I can eliminate the y term. Um, and now I've got dv dx equals pv. Right? Well, now I can solve this just like any other differential equation, like the ones we did yesterday, where they're really pretty straightforward. Rearrange, get all the v's and dv's on this side, and then everything else on this side. Integrate that. And now I know the integral of 1 over v is the natural log of v, and that equals p dx. Now I'm just rewriting this, this natural log statement, in exponential form. So now I have an explicit formula for what my v is. And that v will work every time to make these first order linear differential equations pretty straightforward. It's, it's very much cookbook, uh, not a lot of clever stuff to do here. Um, so you can just follow the steps and it'll work every time.